So the idea for tonight was for you to see a few things you haven't before, if you've ever seen me here. Um, it's kind of interesting because everything we do here ends up on YouTube, and so it's kind of difficult to remember what you have and haven't done. But I knew that none of these had been in the show before, with one exception. I'm going to start with him because I knew everybody would be upset if he didn't make an appearance. What do you call a snake with legs? A politician. Another good answer would be lizard. This is a lizard, but he is not an iguana. He is not a Komodo dragon. And he is certainly not some gecko who's constantly going on about saving you money on insurance. No, he's a black and white tegu. He's from Argentina and his name is Capone. Isn't he awesome? Yes. And isn't he handsome? No. no, he does not have the mumps, those big squishy cheeks. Squishy, squishy. That's where he stores fat, and right now he's storing a whole lot of it because this is wintertime still here, and that means it's summertime in Argentina. So he's really, really trying to pack on the fat so he can make it through what would be wintertime in Argentina and it's really hard to fill him up. When he's hungry, he marches out into my kitchen and stares at my refrigerator. <laughs> so I'm just gonna set him here right on the stage. Don't worry, he won't run away, but he might in fact walk away. So, uh, <laughs> you know what he feels like? He feels like a slightly deflated football. <laughs> So stuff that you normally don't see in my show starts right here. <laughs> Let's see who's who in here. I know, one of the ways you can tell that somebody's into snakes, they have a lot more pillowcases than they have pillows. And they're usually crazy colored. Who would ever sleep on this? All right. From California, the California king snake. Why do they call him a king snake? What does he eat? Kings. How many people just said kings? <laughs> Little bitty kings. I do not know if you play chess, but the game is over when your opponent swallows your king. <laughs> now this guy is really, really cool. This is what you would normally see with sort of the stripes down his back, although they, uh, they vary a lot. But that brings me to another phase of the same thing. Check this out. Huh. It's not like this is rapid access, huh? <laughs> you know, the thing is, you know what claustrophobia is, right? Yeah. yeah, well, snakes have claustrophilia. They prefer to be squeezed in tight. In fact, they feel a lot safer. They're squeezed in someplace where it's really hard for a prisoner to squeeze in after them, squeeze in after them. So they really like being in really tight little spaces. Here's the same thing in albino. Isn't he gorgeous? He's also not very friendly. You gonna bite me? Yeah, you are, aren't you? Yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, sweetheart. So one more before we do something bigger. <laughs> okay, now that was two king snakes. Why do you suppose they call this one a milk snake? <laughs> First of all, unlike the last snake, they don't look like milk. In fact, if your milk looks like this, don't drink it. From Costa Rica, the largest milk snake in the world is the black milk snake. I can't tell you what a conversation starter this is at the dog park. 
So since we've seen these guys, let's move straight on to the finale. And you know, one of the things about doing what I do is dealing with the, uh, the law from time to time. What you're about to meet actually is illegal for me to cross the state lines with because of a bunch of silly politicians who discovered that it was an easy, low-hanging fruit to say, we want to ban pythons, right? And what you're about to meet is an animal that would not defend himself if you beat him to death. And yet I have to commit a class three felony to cross state lines with him. Imagine if somebody told you that about your dog. So here we go. He is, um, <laughs> he's a new recruit in many ways. A, uh, a guy called me who works for NASA. By the way, this animal makes me really, really gratified that Rubbermaid discovered the wheel. <laughs> the guy from NASA, the only problem with, uh, with him keeping this animal is he has to fly all over the, the world doing what he does. And his wife has lupus, and so if, this is an animal that's really too much for a woman with that condition to be dealing with. And so he, uh, he looked me up and found me and said, can you do this? And I said, yes. But I am going to ask for a little help. Yes, come on up here, Greg, Austin, Johnny. And do I have uh, Brett too, please? I'll start with the head. You guys can pick up the rest of him. This is Casper. Okay, now please remember, if that end begins to gurgle, do not point it toward anyone. <laughs> I was once at a kid's five-year birthday party when a snake about this size got me from this shoulder to that foot, and that was the highlight of the show. <laughs> they got to see the snake man get pooped on. When you're five, it just doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> and you see the big deal, have you ever looked at a bird's feet? You guys ever looked at a bird's feet? It's not skin, it's scales. Snakes and birds are closely related. So when this snake poops, it's about like a hundred pound bird. <laughs> snake poop, snake poop is bird poop that did not fall very far. So here, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. Do we have our cameraman ready? Let's see. I'll tell you what, you guys, let's try to get it up over your shoulders. Watch your hat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Where's our camera guy? Here's your photo op. Ladies and gentlemen, friends that can strict together, stick together. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Daryl, how long is that thing? Well, it's funny you should ask me that, Russ. You guys are now going to help me. Let's see, go ahead and put her back in front him back in front of you. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna walk right down here because we don't know exactly how long this animal is. And there's somebody among us who actually has a tape measure. Yeah, it's you. Okay, come follow me down the steps here. Come on. Yeah, 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 watch the lizard. Who's got a tape here we go. Got a tape this is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, to the floor. There we go. Okay, now the trick is, <laughs> the trick is, this is one of these old fashioned tape measures that your average seamstress would use. It's 10 feet long, which means we're going to run out of it shortly. Just follow the spine. Keep following. There we go. Keep going. You guys want to help? Show me where we stop. Okay, so there's 10 feet. Right about there. And we take it from there. Rush, I thought, I thought you didn't want us to measure our snakes in public. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, what I said was to not keep score. <laughs> Which is to say no bragging about the length of your yeah, snake. Yeah, you hold, I'll hold that spot. That's 35. There you go. Need the other end. It's the world's slowest right, getaway right going there. on right here. Yeah. And that is how long? 
uh, 39. Ten so feet. 10 feet and 39 inches, so. 13 feet. 13 feet. Ladies and gentlemen, Casper.